Hi there, I'm Renaud from Our Mountains, and today we're going to have a look at the floating text system that is included in Phil. We'll see what it does, we'll see how we can use the feedback to trigger some floaties, we'll see how intensity control works, and we'll have a look at how we can use code to change the values of our floating text at runtime. All right, I'm here in the Phil Tactical demo scene, which focuses on floating text, and you can see that if I press the left click button there, the characters shoot. I'm turning off the sound again because it's going to be annoying to hear them shoot all the time. So we've got three spawners being used here. The leftmost one is using a simple text component. The middle one is using Text Mesh Pro. And the rightmost one is also using Text Mesh Pro, but also using feedbacks on spawn, which change the rotation, interpolate the color, and there's basically no limit to what you can do with that. So that's it for the demo. Now let's have a look at how we can actually create our own. So I've created an empty scene for us to do some tests in. The first thing we want to do if we want to spawn some floaties is we want to create a floating text spawner. So I'm going to call the subject floaties spawner and I'm going to add a mm floating text spawner to it. Next thing I want to do is set up the pooler. And so for that, I need to specify a object to pool. And I'm going to search in my project for mm floating text because Phil comes with ready to use prefabs. And I'm going to drag this one here. Uh, I'm going to use the Text Mesh Pro version. The next thing I want to do is create a MMF player. So I'm going to call that my player and I'm going to add a MMF player component to it. Then here I want to go into UI floating text. That gives me a floating text feedback. We've created our spawner. We've created our MMF player. So we've got everything now to trigger some nice floating text. If I press play on my MMF player, you can see I get some very nice floating text. The setup is complete. Now let's see how we can display something else than just 100 forever. All right, so to take things further, let's say I have a cube and I want that cube to emit floating text with a random value. Let's set that up. So first thing I want to do is create a cube. That's nice. I'm going to change its material to something better looking. And here we go. And I'm going to add a empty child to that and call that my floaties controller. Doesn't really matter. And to that empty object, I'm going to add the test floaties script that I just created. So the test floaties script is super simple. As you can see, it exposes a MMF player that I can bind in the inspector. And at update, it does a very crude input detection. If I press space, then it generates a random value between 0 and 100 as a float. And then it calls play feedbacks on our MMF player, which will play its sequence of feedbacks. As you can see, we are passing the position of the transform of this component. And we're also passing the intensity that we just generated. So let's see if that works. So I'm going to bind my MMF player. So in a real world scenario, let's say my cube is maybe my character or something. I would probably put the MMF player with the cube or parent it to the cube. So I'm going to press play, see if that works. So right now we're still outputting a hundred. The reason for that is here in my floating text feedback, I haven't checked use intensity as value. So it's just outputting whatever value I had put in there by default, 100. So we fix that by checking that checkbox, press play again. And now, okay, it's working. Well, at least it's progress. Um, we're getting all random value, but if it's unlikely we want to display something uh, not rounded like that. So again, we go back to our Sorry, MMF player here or floating text feedback and rounding method. I'm going to go with round. Press play again. Try again. 
and now we're getting nice rounded numbers another thing we may want to, ch to change is right now our text is spawning in the middle of our cube right like here if i move my flow disk controller which uh, if you remember if i click in the right position here is passing its position to the feedback if we want to have our floaties spawn slightly above the cube to have something nicer looking we can move it up like that if we do that uh, we want to also make sure that we're using the right position mode so by default right now we're using the feedback position so that would be uh, the position of that mmf player which is still in the middle of the cube so one solution would be to also move this thing up the other solution uh, if we want to rather use the play position then we just switch to play position mode press play again then press space and you can see it's all spawning above the cube now now there are some use cases where using your feedback's intensity to drive the value of your floating text won't be ideal thankfully there are other ways to do that uh, here's one so here i've modified my test floaties script to do two things the first one is i'm declaring a mmf floating text to get uh, just like i would a component i'm getting my feedback and then i'm changing its value in this case to something so when i press play in editor well it's still doing one and the reason for that is I forgot to uncheck use intensity as value. So right now it's still using intensity. You can see I'm not even passing an intensity anymore. So by default, it's one. So in this case, I want to have use intensity as value unchecked. I press play again. And it's displaying something. So it's working in a real world scenario, of course. You probably wouldn't display something, but maybe that would be the value of your damages. That would be the amount of XP you've gained and so on. Just remember, it has to be a string, but that could be, uh, you know, like something like uh, a float that you turn into a string. Anything will work. All right. Uh, that was all for today. I hope that you've learned something new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.